Okay, we're live. Back when I first heard about Bitcoin, the point that was brought up most about it for its identity and what it was, was private money that was outside the control of central banks and governments. And for years, that libertarian view was very much its identity. And I feel like people in the space have been fighting to legitimize Bitcoin, where along the way from its inception in 2009 all the way to where it is for the following decade, It was fighting for legitimacy, where it wasn't just a tulip mania. It wasn't just magic internet money, not backed by anything. There was always that fight, that struggle to establish legitimacy that Bitcoin is real, Bitcoin is legitimate, and it has real world applications. After I got really deep into the weeds in the space starting in 2017, I saw more and more instances of that becoming the case. A lot of educated people and intelligent people who started learning about Bitcoin as well, they started, <clears throat> excuse me, they started to share their rationales for why Bitcoin is a fantastic creation, why it's an amazing piece of technology, why uh, all of its properties make it something that's worth paying attention to, worth being involved with, worth learning about. When Facebook was making the Libra token, that helped push Bitcoin, I think that was 2018, into mainstream consciousness a little bit further. And then we had the bull market of 21 and 22. <clears throat> and then with the, I think with the Bitcoin ETFs, that was the final step that led to Bitcoin being a legitimate asset. We still have a road to travel. There's still a mass adoption of understanding of its utility, why it's important, understanding the juxtapositions of Bitcoin, meaning our monetary system, uh, unbacked fiat currencies, currencies controlled and issued by central banks, uh, how the creation of money and how fractional reserve lending leads to devaluation of currencies over time, how that creates wealth disparities and all the second, third, fourth, et cetera, orders of effect that this monetary system and having essentially corrupted money affects human interaction, human civilization, how it affects so many aspects of our lives. And having that juxtaposition and seeing those things, we understand how Bitcoin is important. And I, the last six months, the price of Bitcoin and things going on with Bitcoin have more or less been sideways. And it was interesting on a side note how I felt like there's been nothing worth publishing, nothing worth saying, because there was nothing going on. The prices were sideways and there was nothing new to be said that hadn't already been said in regards to Bitcoin, in regards to it being sound money, in regards to it being 
uncensorable in regards to it being a bare asset with no third party intermediaries. And then it sort of strikes me now with where we're at with the absolute madness in the world. Like I grew up during the Cold War days and the post-Cold War days. So I was one of those people that lived in a world uh, compared to today in the chaos of this fourth turning cycle of relative stability. So I have that juxtaposition of seeing just how batshit crazy things are today. And this isn't the normal order of things. Although from another perspective, it could be said that in order to heal some of the wounds, you've got to bring the hurts to the surface. You have to bring the uh, dysfunctions out in order to address them. And I think on a different type of timeline, humanity's doing that and we're going to end up on a better side after all is said and done. But in the meantime, the world's just plain batshit crazy. And part of what's happening is that in this whole process on both sides, we're looking at the monetary system and how humans organize themselves and the systems of monetary creation, monetary control, monetary regulation, monetary system interaction that we have. And this is going to come under the microscope. We're seeing so many things, so many systems breaking down, so many things where we're seeing the corruption, when we're seeing how it's all about the insiders, it's all about who the donor class is and how there's two tiers of society, those who are connected to the people who create the rules, who control vast amounts of wealth, and how they're all connected together in one big bed and everyone else. And that's something that's been a facet of humanity since its early days. I remember, uh, as a side note, Dan Carlin, he has his uh, series, Hardcore History, goes into fantastic lengths talking about different topics. And one of them was um, the end of the Roman Republic and as it transitioned into the Roman Empire around the days of Julius Caesar and how there was so much chaos on the governmental level, how much uh, exercises and abuses of power there were for the sake of gaining and having and controlling power in the Roman government. And there's been a, I mean, we see this mirrored, especially in America today, but the idea of people being able to exercise the influence of wealth and the levers of power for their own benefit is nothing new. It's a human condition. And we're at a point now where we are questioning this fundamentally as something we want to, of how is a part of our fabric and do we want this? Are there things about this we want to change, we need to change? And I'm taking a step back when I really got into the weeds in 2017 and it clicked and I got it and fell down the rabbit hole when I understood where Bitcoin, where decentralized protocols, blockchain-based protocols fit in the human interaction. One of those things that clicked was that we're going from a model of centralized everything to decentralized, face-to-face, -face, localized, peer-to-peer -peer interactions. Our model of interaction on the entirety of the human population every single human being on earth is changing. So these changes that are going on, including the monetary system, including fractional reserve lending, include central banks being in control of the money supply and the money issuance or having its hand in the money issuance that it does. This is coming under examination. And this is where Bitcoin, I think, has a new identity where it no longer needs to fight for legitimacy, what it needs to become, what people need to speak up about it when they discuss it, what it needs to be is that private money that is divorced 
from governments that is divorced from the machinations of the ruling classes as a tool of who gets to be a winner or loser, where it is a private money that nobody controls, but everybody participates in in some way, shape, or form, either as a reserve asset, either as private wealth, either as transfer payments for international use, either as a store of va- uh, strategic store of value, a uh, corporate balance sheet asset, any and all of those things. Bitcoin no longer needs to fight for legitimacy. It, it's arrived. It has arrived. Now it needs to go out from its teenage years to its adult years and start kicking ass and being the reserve asset, the soundest money on earth, the soundest money we've ever had, the most equal, rules-based, uh, trustless system that no one needs, we don't need someone to control Bitcoin. Bitcoin is. And all we need to do is interact it with it and understand the rules of the protocol and then start reshaping our behaviors around that. And when we do that, that's when things change. And when we learn about Bitcoin, that's when we see more and more clearly how our current systems are messed up. It's not that our systems are all it needs is a few changes and a few rules and new people. It needs to be, we need to use a completely fundamentally different system. We need to interact with each other fundamentally differently. And the rules that Bitcoin, a very highly decentralized blockchain-based protocol enforces is both a product of this new mindset and also a reinforcer of it, where it's just going to, as I've said over the years, it's just going to continue to feed the steamroller cycle, a self-reinforcing loop. When I say that Bitcoin's going to eat the world, it's because it is the most sound money out there. It is because Nobody controls it. Same rules for all. Anyone can participate who decides to. It is time for Bitcoin and time for the advocates of Bitcoin to mature to the next level. It is international private money that is sound, that is honest, that is uncorruptible. And is exactly the thing we need right now. It is exactly the thing we need. People know it. It's identifiable. Even if people don't understand it, people have heard of it. And it's ready to go to the next level. It is ready for that. That is where the new value proposition lies. That is the value proposition. It is international sound money, divorced and completely free of influence from the machinations of people in governments and central banks. It defies political agendas. It defies fiscal irresponsibility. It defies manipulation by those who wish to try and hoard it as a means control or try and manage the protocol as a means of control. It has become too big to try and rustle down. The can of worms has already spilled on the ground and they're multiplying. Bitcoin is global private money, period. That's the only thing someone has to say in its defense. Enough has been said about everything else that Bitcoin, Bitcoin is. It's what we need. Okay. I think I've said everything that needs to be said on this. Hopefully this becomes this, this me saying this becomes one of the snowflakes that becomes the avalanche, but I think it's Bitcoin's time. It is, it is now, it is now. And that, that is a side note. That is the new value proposition. That is what propels it 
to greater accumulation. And uh, ultimately, if you want to look at the the, 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 the valuation, relative valuation to other currencies, uh, makes its price go up because it, it, it goes into this tier. So that's going to be one of the side effects. But Bitcoin is now global private money, period. And it is the private global money because of its properties, because it's uncorruptible, because the rules can't be skewed and because it's decentralized and it's censorship resistant and it's peer to peer. And anyone, anyone who follows the rules can participate. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. You can follow Tiny Crypto Blog on all the social media sites, listen to the show notes. And with that, be well, everyone. Talk to you soon.